Now today, Collective Evolution published this article that I saw. NASA admits to chemtrails as they propose spraying stratospheric aerosols into Earth's atmosphere. And it shows a recent presentation from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory discussing geoengineering. A lot of funding is being spent around the world on adapting, preparing for the worst. Okay, so that's plan A. Now what happens if that's not enough? Is where geoengineering comes in. Plan B. And it makes clear that this is not up for debate as to whether or not it's being talked about, whether or not it's actually going on. To increase the albedo, right? So I can turn up the albedo, make the earth shinier. And this is called solar radiation management. It's a question of who's going to run this system and what will the policies be. And this took place about a year ago in February 2013. So there have been a variety of schemes proposed ranging from zany to pretty low tech. And they all have to do with getting aerosols into the stratosphere and keeping them there for years and years and years. So for example, if we used existing technology, if we used aircraft, this would be the equivalent of taking a small airline and just saying, you do nothing but spray aerosols in the stratosphere for the next in decades. So right there, his first example of using existing technology to put these aerosols into the sky is using jet aircraft. So is it ridiculous to talk about chemtrails in the sky being part of geoengineering? Absolutely not. It's being discussed in a very serious format here in NASA at the Jet Propulsion Lab about how to mitigate climate change, what to do about it, what's being discussed. And he goes on to talk about all the negative consequences that they know can happen from this. There are a lot of issues. One is it's known from looking at volcanic eruptions and this cooling effect that you get uneven heating and you actually cause drought in some areas. So country A decides to do geoengineering and they cause a drought in country B. You know, the missiles start flying. Um, what happens if we stop it abruptly? If, if we can't get control of CO2 and we start, you know, injecting stuff in the stratosphere, it's costing us $10, $10 billion a year and we have an economic meltdown or a natural disaster or a volcano erupts and we can't fly airplanes for a while. What happens if that shield is removed quickly? We rapidly jump up in temperature. Even greater than that is the fact of what we call instability in the system. If you whack a bell, it rings for a while. The concern of the climate system ringing like a bell and being unstable. But we're going to see this not only has consequences for the environment, but for who gets to control the environment, what that means for global power. Those are some of the most important questions. Now watch what he says here. And there are other issues. What about weaponization? If you grew up watching the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman like me, and remember there's an episode where... A bad guy builds a weather machine and he's you know, holding all the governments hostage. Well, this is not science fiction anymore. It really could work. Not to mention the distraction of spending cost and, who argue, and, and, again, arguments over the thermostat. Whose hand's on the thermostat, right? Look how hard it is to get international agreements on anything. They know it can do everything from cause drought to cause global disagreements. It can empower a rogue individual to unilaterally control the atmosphere, maybe plan out a Dr. Strangelove or James Bond kind of mad scientist hostage situation. If it's perceived to be cheap and effective, then in the words of Dr. Strangelove, it merely requires the will <laughs> of, of trying this, right? And, and the perception of this could lead to unilateral action. And don't take my word for it. Listen to the World Economic Forum. Every year they put out a risk assessment. Just a couple of weeks ago they put out a risk assessment and they listed five wild cards or X, X factors for the 21st century. Rogue geoengineering was one of those. This is the economist and the business leaders worrying about somebody taking rogue action. He literally said from NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratories that a legitimate concern is the weaponization of geoengineering. What happens if a mad scientist holds the planet hostage? I'm just going to play it again. What about weaponization? A bad guy builds a weather machine and he's you know holding all the governments hostage. Well, this is not science fiction anymore. That's right. The top globalists are worried about unilateral action with geoengineering because they know testing is underway. They count on the public's ignorance and we're stuck debating whether or not geoengineering is going on, whether or not the chemtrail phenomenon is really what the conspiracy theorists think it is. And here's NASA talking about we're concerned about rogue geoengineers. We're concerned about a mad scientist hostage situation. We're worried about the Dr. Strangeloves who work partially in private sector, partially inside secret parts of the government.